Do you ever feel like Rhino is a little bit too rigid or holding you back? Today, we're going to show you a technique to model more freely in Rhino so that you can speed up your design process and unleash your creativity. Welcome to the tutorial. No background music, no filler content, just all good stuff. So let's get started. The first thing I'll do is come to the rectangle tool here, select here and create a rectangle. Click once, and click again. I'll select that rectangle, extrude, do command shift, and I can either move this face and I can also extrude it as well if I hit that circle there. I can also select an edge and move just that one piece there. And I can select a point and move that as well. So already you're seeing we can get some pretty fun shapes and forms just from doing that basic selecting the face and moving in and out. What I like to do too is always copy and paste geometry. I can always re-extrude these items and I can just start manipulating these boxes. So let's say I want to create more standard gable house. I can move this over, select the face and then extrude. And then I can come up here and create a house. Again, you'll notice, you know, it's not directly in the middle. That's fine. Right now we're just exploring different forms. And, you know, maybe you want a situation where you do have where the gable's not, you know, more of like that kind of roof. And maybe you even come back and like adjust one of these things. And all of a sudden you're creating different types of architecture, different types of forms, and you're discovering new ways to model using this technique. I'll come here and extrude again. Let's say we want to do kind of a stacking thing. I just did command C, command V, select this corner, go like that. I can, you know, do things from here. I can maybe go like that, maybe select an edge there. So you can just see how I can, you know, copy, paste, move. Let's just do copy and paste this, this piece. And again, at this point, you know, is not on my mind. I can come back and I can size these things properly. I can check the measurement. We're really just wanting to different ideas and see, you know, potentially what we could come up with. So this is just a really nice way to get some basic massing concepts in place. Maybe it looks crazy. Maybe it doesn't. At any point, you can just select this, move it over. Oh, we had an extra form and then just extrude again and play around with it more. The next thing that we can do is you can continue to model with more detail. So let's say we did go back to that gable form. I'll just push this back over here and we're going to select this edge, move this up. I can always come here and I can extrude this out, kind of create a space maybe for an entrance way. I can select this item and then come out and create like a little shed thing here and move this down here. What you'll notice is right now I'm not doing measurements. I can always click select, click hold, and then it will snap to here and, and check your, you know, this is what I have as my defaults for the snapping. If this is your first time opening Rhino, you'll have to kind of configure those, but these are my preferences here. If you do want to do this with precise measurements, I can select the rectangle here and do 12 feet and then do 12 feet again. And then when I extrude, I'll just do another 12 feet. And that way, when I, let's say I would make that gable again, when I move this, I could just say six feet. And when I extrude this here, I can just do six feet. If you see that there, now I know that that is on a precise measurement. Same with here. I can then do like six feet again and similar with like extrusions, either if you go in or out, you can measure those as well. So you can both do this in a semi-precise way or just unleash your creativity. Awesome. I hope you thought this tutorial was helpful. Follow and sub subscribe and follow along if you'd like to see more of this content. We'll have some new videos coming out soon. Thanks for joining.